Hip hop was built on the back of funk artists like James Brown and George Clinton. But while most early hip hop artists were just sampling funk, Dell, the funky homo sapien, combined hip hop and funk to become a true amalgamation of the two, and he pretty quickly became a legend because of it. Over the past 30 years, Dell has become one of hip hop's most reliable MCs, taking the sound of his hometown of Oakland and bringing it to the entire world. Dell may now be most known for his legendary features on songs by the Gorillaz, or even for his futuristic supergroup Deltron 3030, but when he started out he was known for just one thing, being Ice Cube's cousin. Before he even released any music himself, Dell was writing for Ice Cube's group Delench Mob and his protege Yo-Yo, and even helped Cube write some songs in America's Most Wanted. You see, Dell was destined to become a musician. He was influenced by hip-hop's early pioneers of the 80s, but was equally drawn to 70s and 80s funk, specifically the work of George Clinton's groups Parliament and Funkadelic. He was writing rap since the fourth grade, but it wasn't until age 19 when he released his debut solo album, I Wish My Brother George Was Here. This album not only is inspired by funk, but it's a recontextualization of the genre for the modern hip-hop age, a direct extension of Parliament Funkadelic's golden age, from the funk-based samples to the overall personality of the record. This album feels like something that George Clinton himself would make. A lot of people had thought that the album title was in reference to a real brother that Dell had lost, and there were also rumors that it was in reference to George Clinton himself, but it actually was a reference to Liberace in a classic Looney Tunes short. I wish my brother George was here. This album was executive produced by Dell's cousin Ice Cube, but even though it was a huge hit, Dell wasn't all that pleased with how the album's production turned out, and thought it was too singular and mainstream. So this unfortunately would be the last time that the two would make an album together. Around this time, Dell had formed the group Hieroglyphics, with the souls of Mischief, Casual, Peplove, and Domino. The group was instrumental in forming the new sound of the California underground scene, along with other groups like Project Blowed, The Far Side, and The Living Legends. This new West Coast sound was free-flowing and improvisational, and fundamental in creating much of the best hip-hop ever made. Dell's next album, No Need for Alarm, was really the coming out party for the Hieroglyphics as a crew, with production and features from most of the members at the time. Dell was born and raised in Oakland, and this album is a Bay Area classic, showcasing the rich and unique style that the area had at the time. This is my personal favorite Dell the Funky Homo Sapien album, with the production being more varied than on his debut, but still embodying the funk like only Dell can. 1993 is in my opinion the greatest year in hip hop history, and this album stands tall with the likes of Wu-Tang's 36 Chambers and A Tribe Called Quest Midnight Marauders as some of the best that the year has to offer. Through this first era of his career, Dell was signed to Elektra Records, but they had dropped him right before he was to release his third album. This led to the Hyro crew forming their own independent label, called Hieroglyphics Imperium Recordings. As an independent label, they paved the way for most underground artists today, running their own careers and bringing the music directly to consumers themselves. They were some of the first hip-hop artists to embrace the internet, and with the group's now famous three-eyed logo, they had carved out a space among the Wu-Tang Clan and A Tribe Called Quest as some of the most iconic hip-hop groups of all time. Dell released his third album, Future Development, in 1997, further fusing the funk with the Bay Area hip-hop sound. Hyra would release their first album as a group just a few months later, and with Dell as their figurehead, he had firmly secured his place as an icon by this point. The year 2000 might be the best year in his whole career. On top of releasing his Billboard charting album, Both Sides of the Brain, Dell also came together with Dan the Automator and Kid Koala to form the group Deltron 3030. The group released their self-titled album in May of 2000, and it would become Dell's best album in the eyes of most. It's a concept album, set place in the year 3030. Dell plays the role of Deltron Zero, a soldier rebelling against the evil 31st century New World Order that's suppressing human rights and hip-hop itself. Dan the Automator, who is one of the most underappreciated producers ever, crafts an eerie futuristic movie-like soundtrack for Dell to rap over. Dan plays the role as the cantankerous Captain Aptos, and DJ Kid Koala is Skiznod the Wonder Boy, and together they create a masterpiece of futuristic hip-hop. And Dell is in top form here too, with his lyrics ranging from hilarity, to politically charged commentary, to describing the larger-than-life science fiction scenes that run through the story. This album is on the shortlist for the greatest concept albums ever made, and probably would be Dell's entry into the Hip Hop Hall of Fame if that was possible. 
Both sides of the brain had Dell's biggest hit since 1991's Mr. Dabalina, and it was the stank anthem, If You Must. This was the first Dell song that I ever heard, because I'm pretty sure it was on one of the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games as a kid. And it sounds crazy, but hearing a whole song about somebody smelly as a kid really opened up my ears to a more humorous side of hip-hop, and was one of the foundational songs that put me on track to become an underground hip-hop head. Following his amazing year in 2000, Dell got the biggest look of his career, featuring on songs by the Gorillaz called Clint Eastwood and Rock the House. These songs, especially Clint Eastwood, would become classics and would introduce Dell to millions of fans who may not have been following hip hop at the time. This collaboration is so iconic and it really is a match made in heaven. I feel like a lot of the time rap features can be plugged into whatever song they call for. This song has a vibe that I feel like only Dell the Funky Homo Sapien could match and he takes this from a great song to an undeniable classic. Dell has always been one of the best collaborators around, whether it be with other MCs, producers, or in this case a band. In 2003, Hyro would release their best album as a crew, Full Circle, and this in my opinion would close out the prime of Dell's career. He would continue to make great music over the next two decades, but this just concludes his run of classics for me. It would be a whole eight years after Both Sides of the Brain until Dell released his next solo record. And for this occasion, he would link up with one of the best rap labels of the era, Definitive Jux. This album fits right in with Def Jux's hip hop first mentality, but also calls back to Dell's roots, with the first seconds of the album containing a sample of Parliament Funkadelic's Glenn Goins singing Swing Down Sweet Chariots. Dell has been an incredible lyricist since the start of his career, and you can see that he still prides himself on this skill set two decades in maybe even more so than in his youth. On these later records, he's able to get much more personal with his writing, while still maintaining the punchlines and larger-than-life personality that he was known for. Around this time, he linked up with another Def Jux affiliate, Tame One, to make the album Parallel Universes, along with the producer Parallel Thought. His discography from this point is filled with hidden gems, and it's a shame that most people don't know about them, because Dell was making it pretty easy for his fans to get as much new music as possible. In 2009, he released Funk Man, The Stimulus Package, for free, and then Automatic Static for just $3 on Bandcamp. And then in 2010, he released It Ain't Illegal Yet, for the same price. This album's title was a quote from George Clinton himself, from when he was talking about thinking, and how we should all be taking advantage of making our own decisions while we still are able to. This is a mantra that I feel like Dell has lived by his whole career. He's lived his career on his own terms, never letting the industry tell him what his next move should be. The 2010s are his least celebrated era, but it's actually where he's released the most heat. It's just that he was no longer playing the game, he was beating by his own funky drum. Following up on the momentum of his past couple years, he released three solo albums, two West Coast Avengers mixtapes, another album with Parallel Thought, a new Hieroglyphics album, a second Deltron 30 album, and my personal favorite of the bunch, Gate 33, with Amp Live. Most of these albums were self-released, with Dell giving them directly to his fans. Also throughout this period, Dell has been producing a lot of this work, and even playing multiple instruments on some of these albums, becoming a true modern day P-Funk all-star. His 2011 album Golden Era felt like the closing of a chapter as he looked back on the golden era of both his career and hip-hop itself. For his whole career, Dell had been looking forward to the future of the world, of hip-hop, and himself. So it was nice seeing him take a look back before he took a big look forward on the next one. Event 2 was the second Deltron album, and continues the ambitious storytelling from their debut. This project was in production since 2004, so when it came it was kind of impossible for it to live up to expectations. Overall I think it's a very solid album, and I appreciate the added narration from Joseph Gordon-Levitt to make it feel more cinematic, but the sequel just never topped the original. Gate 13 felt like a throwback, but not in that it was a sequel to a previous album or anything. The album gives me the same feeling as No Need for Alarm, with this lively and fun production, and Dell riding his inspiration to whatever direction it takes him to. Even just in the last 12 months, dell has been on an incredible run. He linked back up with the Gorillaz for a new song, and even joined forces with Cool Keith to give us a full length project. And he even released two EPs this spring in collaboration with a sunglass company, because he had a new pair of signature sunglasses in partnership with them. So over 30 years in, Dell is still killing it, still releasing great music, and still is the funkiest homo sapien around. Thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this and want to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that is always appreciated. 
We recently dropped our second issue of Death Magazine, so make sure you go check that out. In it, we have album reviews, interviews, articles, art, and so much. I had a great interview with Al Davino, and we got into his painting, his art, his music, his rapping, his producing, everything you can imagine. So make sure you guys go check that out at staydeaf.com. Thank you, as always, to my patrons who voted on Dell as this month's video topic. Make sure to go check out the Patreon if you want to vote on next month. As always, I got a lot more planned for you guys, so stay tuned, stay safe, and stay deaf. Thanks for watching.